Hey now, I love smoking meat, cheese, nuts, all, all kinds of awesome stuff. Um, and I built this, uh, I'm going to say like reasonably impressive brick smoker uh, about eight years ago. It's huge. It's awesome. It withstand, withstands the elements super well here in, um, in Canada where it gets like super cold. I've smoked briskets when it's minus 53 Celsius with the wind chill outside. Uh, however, a couple years ago, I noticed a problem that started. It all started off with uh, the difference in heat expansion here. I used to have a, uh, a metal um, plate running across as the ceiling inside the smoker and it actually eventually caused uh, a split in the mortar here at the top layer of brick and with that water got in and caused a huge mess. Um, this here is my finished product which is this uh, concrete smoker roof. So I'm just going to walk you through what things kind of used to look like and um, how I got to this point here. Yeah, so as you can see, um, uh, the uh, the water kind of got in um, and would get underneath this uh, plate steel here. And just particularly in the winter with melting and freezing and melting and freezing and whatnot, um, totally destroyed a lot of uh, the brick here. Um, you can see like I haven't even touched this here today. And it uh, had just all cracked, the mortar had cracked right here at that layer. and had shifted. So I've got to get rid of all the brick. I kind of started to pull some of them off here uh, already, obviously, but um, I'll get them all off here and get it cleaned up. And like, so up on here, like I've shoved, I've moved a little bit of the stuff around, but this here, this cracking here was all uh, because of the weather. So like I say, uh, it all just needs to go. And you can see evidence of the moisture here, just with the rusting that's happening on this steel. So another problem that occurred over time was that this uh, door here um, was originally attached, uh, just like stuck with, with mortar um, to this smoker. And over time that that seam also kind of popped there. So I'm gonna try to find a way to also get this better attached and sealed up um, just in this space here. So I also have this, um, just this metal plate up here, and I, when this uh, when this door frame had first kind of broke loose, it had to try to angle forward just a little bit. Uh, not that it was ever in danger of actually coming out, just because it was catching on the the actual brick with the angle iron here. Uh, however, I wound up drilling through um, two layers of brick and the angle iron and the plate steel, running this threaded rod um, and just securing it like so. Um, but <laughs> uh, I won't exactly be using that on the. Uh, the new version. Well, I got that roof off. This is uh, obviously from on the inside there. I got everything just kind of tarp strapped together and covered up with uh, a tarp here. Um, now uh, I need to kind of get everything emptied out and get some forms kind of prepped up here. All right, so I am actually inside of my smoker now. Um, makes me a little nervous. <laughs> but my plan here is I just threw um, a sheet of plywood up on top and I'm just going to uh, trace around here um, and then I'll wind up cutting that out with a jigsaw and just getting it as close to the shape as possible. I'll probably just come in just a little bit um, and then I'll wind up trying to brace it here across some of these brick shelves. So I will start to trace. Well, here we go, a little uh, outline of the inside of that smoker. So I'm just gonna use the jigsaw and kind of just rip around uh, that there and <laughs> probably have to cut a couple of times uh, and adjust it just so that it fits uh, decently. All right, so I'm totally gonna brag that I 100% nailed this on the first try. <laughs> uh, no adjustments uh, needed, that's fantastic. All right, so that's nice and flush. You can see I got this uh, set up here with just sort of a combination of two by fours and four by fours, uh, and then just um, some project wood, just what I needed to get it set up nice and at the right level so now i just have to find a way to kind of uh plug up those gaps just a little bit they're really quite narrow but i just don't want to have a bunch of concrete being able to slop into the smoker here um, but first i'm going to remove that uh, plywood up at the top there and uh, get it sorted out for the chimney okay so in order to uh <laughs> sort out the chimney situation i'm gonna have to cut off this uh the old uh, the chimney from the old um plate steel here. There were just a few tack welds uh, holding this thing on, so I'm just going to use the old angle grinder here and uh, take care of that. I'm going to need two hands for that, so you can see when it's done. 
All right, well that wasn't too hard, so yeah, let's go get the uh, the plywood and that chimney over there. Okay, so after all, I decided to cut a little hole uh, just right here in this um, top plywood piece so that afterwards I can reach up with my fingers and like hopefully uh, pull it down a little bit easier because it's going to have to come down into the smoker. All right, so the next step was figuring out how to, I wanted a little bit of a barrier in between this uh, angle iron and the concrete. So I'm just using some high heat DAP, just a layer of it, uh, because I know if I just put the concrete here anyway, it's going to wind up, um, if it's flush up against it, it's gonna wind up cracking off anyway. So this way I've just got a little bit of a barrier that can have a little bit of flex to it. And then after um, I'm all done pouring the concrete and everything, I can uh, DAP kind of around this just to create like a water seal. So fingers crossed that that'll work. So I did a lot of pining over what I was going to do with uh, some of the gaps that were sort of inevitable here just because it was, you know, a, a wavy surface. Um, so I just took some of this painter's tape and it's barely overlapping the, uh, the brick here. Uh, the vast majority of it's actually on the wood. My thought is, um, even though it's not really sticking super well to the, to the brick, uh, once, as soon as the concrete's in here, that's just going to hold that tape down, that little edge of it that's on here. And when I go to pop this whole thing out, um, most of the tape will come out. If I need to, I can run a knife around the inside just uh, if there's any um, exposed, torn uh, tape still sitting in there. But I don't think uh, I don't think that should be too much of a problem. I just don't want to have uh, concrete leaking into the smoker. All right, so we got the forms pretty much done. I'm just using this uh, one bar here. Actually, I was using this one bar here. I no longer need it. Um, that was kind of just propping up the whole door frame and stuff um, because I had to remove the uh, tarp straps. So then I went ahead and just used two by sixes all the way around here, um, attaching them and basically bracing them on the ground. And you can see, so we've got this form here. I am going to have to use, um, I've got that uh, little uh, skinny board there, that quarter inch stuff, which I'm going to have to put in, in here and cut it just so that it uh, matches what that angle iron is doing there because otherwise we've got a bit of a gap uh, down there. So gonna have to do some measurements and cutting there just with the jigsaw. But other than once that's done, the forms are done. So I started, I've got a four inch um, rise here going down to three on the back. So um, these side pieces are, are on, a, on an angle, very slight angle, and that will allow rain to uh, to run off as opposed to just pooling on top of uh, on top of this roof, which should hopefully help it last better. All right. Well, aside from uh, waiting for some of this glue, I threw a little wood glue um, just with these little spacers here in between that and the original forms. Uh, so that's got to dry up and uh, just make sure that's all nicely connected. But other than that, this uh, form I believe is ready to go. So I just need to get. Uh, some adhesive and um, yeah, like some bonding adhesive for the concrete just to make sure it uh, sticks nicely to the original brick and mortar. And then also, of course, co um, the concrete form oil uh, to go on all the wood here so that hopefully it'll just pop off really nicely when everything's done. So, of course, once I put this all up, I realized I forgot one thing, which was uh, I want to anchor this door uh, to the smoker so that it, it doesn't want to try to like lean out because otherwise there's nothing really holding it in place. So I'm going to do that using these quarter inch bolts. They're six inches long. Um, and I took this one here and I've already bent it a bit, trying to emulate kind of like one of those uh, concrete anchors that you find. Um, but I just wanted something smaller. I didn't want to go with three eighths. I thought that might be a little thick for uh, the concrete that I've got here. Um, so I just put it in my vise and then just used a rubber mallet and kind of smacked it a bit. I might see if I can go just a little bit more of a hook on this and still be able to pass it through the form and, uh, and the hole there. So I did that just using a, a corded drill and um, some metal bits. I started with an eighth inch and then went to a quarter inch, which is uh, just big enough to pass these bolts through. So if I can get a little bit more of a hook on that, then my thought is that uh, it, the concrete will, will really hold this in place and not let it uh, try and slide out or anything. Okay, so I also put these little uh, rubber washers on there just to help prevent water from trying to be able to get into the, uh, the smoker itself. So I'm just pulling these through all the way and then I'm also just going to take a little blob of dab and just kind of wrap it around that and that will again not only help prevent water from getting through but it will help hold these in place right up tight um, right up tight to that angle iron until I've got concrete poured and stuff like that just to hold them in place. 
Okay, so as opposed to uh, rebar or something like that, just given the fact that the concrete pad's only gonna be, you know, uh, at, at its thinnest right around three inches, I'm using this uh, metal ladder wire here. So I'm gonna have to get it up there and just trim it so that it'll fit nicely inside there and then also um, wind up cutting some of the wire just to allow the, the chimney to be in the middle of it. Well, day of the poor, I'm just getting ready to uh, start well, day of the poor, I've got all my materials ready. Uh, I'm starting off with some ready mix uh, concrete here. Uh, this is just some quickrete stuff. And into that, I'm going to be mixing a bit of this vermiculite. Um, probably close to two cups of vermiculite per bag of concrete. And I've just sort of been advised that this is a good way to kind of increase the, uh, the heat durability of this concrete. So I guess we'll find out. So everything's pretty much ready up here. Um, I just need to properly center my... Uh, my chimney, I need to prep um, the the brick here, the pre-existing brick with some concrete adhesive. I'm just going to uh, brush that onto the paintbrush, um, oil up these forms here, and um, yeah, we'll be, uh, we'll be ready to start pouring. All right, so we just went ahead and actually used some Pam spray on this uh, bottom piece of plywood here just so that the concrete can come off. And then uh, we made just a little bit of a slurry with a bit of that quickrete and some uh, concrete bonding adhesive, and that's just painting on there. So we did it to this consistency here, and it was uh, two cups of that vermiculite per bag of quickrete. Yes, yeah, so it's all poured, we're just doing the edging now. Well, here we go. So all the finishing work is done. A little bit of ash seems to somehow have uh, blown up on here, um, but that's okay. I'm gonna let this now um, just kind of set and cure for a couple of days and then I can get these forms off. Well, it has been a few days, so it is time to get these forms off of here. So I'm gonna start by uh, just pulling off these vertical supports, um, taking the screws out and we'll have to kind of poss possibly hold on to the, the actual forms running around the perimeter there just so it can't like shift around too much and then we'll hammer them off. So I unscrewed all the uh, all the vertical ones and um, the vertical supports and then I just took up the two screws out of here and this is already popping off so this is going to come off really uh, really quite easily I think. Okay so yeah it was just this front one that I kind of had to knock off at all but the uh, the other three came off really easily. There's a little bit of cleanup here to do so I'm just going to try and uh, take care of that with just a, a little wire brush or maybe a, a chisel we'll see. All right, so now just looking at the inside here, I'm just going to take a hammer and kind of knock some of these here just to loosen them and get all of the supports for that uh, top plywood out of the way. And then I should just be able to pull it down with that uh, through that hole that I had cut in the middle. So I got up the plywood. Now I just have to clean up um, all of this tape that went around there. And then on the outside, we uh, just need to do a little bit of finishing. So it's just going to be um, some cement that gets in here just to fill up these holes and smooth it out so it doesn't cause trouble with freezing and what not with water. Well, so that tape cleaned up really quite nicely. Um, and then I've also gone ahead and just kind of brushed off some of that fire brick there and the mortar in there. There's the odd little piece here that I can't really dig out all that well. But this is uh, this concrete here is going to be getting covered in refractory mortar anyway. So by wire brushing off um, this fire brick and the, the mortar that was already in there, that's kind of preparing that surface um, for the refractory stuff. All right, so the refractory mortar I'm using is called Sarset. And my plan is to just uh, use these, these uh, putty knives. I've got this kind of wider one as well as a narrow one here, which I'll use to uh, try to apply it on the inside. All right, so here we are after all that uh, refractory mortar was put on. So I got it somewhere around like three sixteenths to a quarter inch thick, depending on, uh, you know, <laughs> the different... Uh, spots you look at here. Uh, I did also kind of just even with my gloved hands um, mushed some into the mortar um, and concrete uh, the joint there um, on top of the top course of fire brick um, and then I came right close to this angle iron. Um, I'm going to wind up um, probably running a bead of high temp dap uh, in there just to protect that little edge of concrete um, and then yeah that's kind of done on the inside. All right, so we're gonna use an angle grinder just with a uh, special disc on it here just to clean up some of this side here before we cement it.
All right, so this is what it looks like after all of the, uh, all of that cement went on here. It was actually like a, a mortar patch, stuff that we used, um, sort of like the sacking you would use along the foundation of a house. Um, so it just got mixed, as you saw, and then was just troweled on really nice and carefully. Then afterwards, I actually used the same, uh, same stuff. I st still need to clean this crap off here. But uh, same stuff and patched up a bunch of the mortar around the sides that had just been cracking, um, especially like around the, the corners and stuff like that. So all the mortar's in really good shape. All right, so just as uh, the next step here, I went ahead and threw some of that dap just all around um, the perimeter of this door uh, just to kind of help seal it up just so that water and whatnot can't get in between the, the brick and the door and cause troubles down the road. All right, so I'm kind of just finishing stuff up here. I want to putting a second coat um, inside the, uh, the smoker ceiling here. Um, I've dealt with all that cracking and stuff that was present in along there and uh, got a full second coat, just a thin one, um, at probably at most an eighth of an inch on here. And now I wetted it down again, just a little bit with, uh, just with a little mister on my uh, garden hose. And now I'm just going over it and just kind of wiping it with my, my hand, you know, the super, super fancy tool here, and just kind of smoothing out a little bit so that it's uh, less rough uh, and whatnot. All right, so my next step here is I'm just uh, brushing on some sealant here. Uh, to the top of the concrete as well as to the side of this here and that should just kind of help protect it against the elements so another thing i'm going to do here just at the base of this chimney where the concrete meets it is i'm going to throw um, a nice bead of that uh, high temp dap just around that um, just in case uh, if over however long this maybe winds up kind of cracking a little bit and just separating from that chimney at least that dap will help prevent uh, moisture from getting in there well, there we are not uh, incredibly pretty, but this stuff's kind of awkward to work with. But um, either way, it's going to be hidden here by this collar. So, yeah, that should do it. And just like so, that chimney is all uh, secured and looking sweet and should be protected nicely from the elements. So it was basically the last step of the smoker renovation here. I uh, went ahead and just kind of gave the, the racks a little scrub down there and uh, got them back in. And we are ready for the first smoke, uh, post roof reno. So all said and done, um, I'm very, very happy with this build here for this roof, how it worked. I think it's going to be really nicely durable. The fact that it's sloped and uh, moisture can just run off it when it's raining or, or whatever is fantastic. It's all nicely sealed up. Only thing left to do, and I'm going to have to wait a few months until spring to do, is just cleaning up a little bit of that runoff there that came um, when I first started this build. Um, other than that, got it all fired up here. Have some, uh, ba some nice pork bacon here, uh, cold smoking. Really happy with it. And until next time, folks, keep it at 11.